No matter the sport, no matter the arena, no matter the age or level of play, there is a game plan for success. You can feel it, hear it, see it. But what about something that you can't see, like an injury to the brain? You need to have a game plan for that too. Protecting your athlete's brain is one of the most essential things you can do. And at every level of competition, you have the tools to do it. You can't always see a concussion, but you can see and learn how to assess one. The Game Plan, a sideline assessment for suspected concussion from the Sports Institute at UW Medicine. No different from the athletes you're there to protect, success requires planning and practice. For every game, your first step is to conduct a medical timeout. This is a meeting designed to share the emergency action plan between officials and healthcare professionals of both teams. The emergency action plan outlines all of the necessary steps to be taken that day to safely transport an athlete to the designated medical facility appropriate to a specific injury or illness. Be prepared. Know what to do before you have to do it. Take the time to get to know your athletes. Concussions can be subtle. The better you know the athlete, the better you'll recognize any changes in normal behavior. Know in advance any pertinent medical history. And if an athlete has any obstacles with reading comprehension or language, as those skills will figure predominantly in assessing a possible concussion. This film will use the Sport Concussion Assessment Tool, or SCAT. It is a standardized tool for evaluating concussions and is the most widely used and researched tool available, and it is available at no cost. It is good practice to have multiple hard copies of the SCAT available on the sideline. Learn to watch the game as the person responsible for the athlete's safety. Be vigilant and learn to recognize mechanisms of injury as well as observable signs of concussion. Witnessing the mechanism of injury, particularly in the case of a suspected concussion, is extremely useful. Are you okay? My head really hurts. <laughs> In all cases, your first step is to assess the athlete's airway, breathing, and circulation. If the athlete is motionless, whether conscious or unconscious, it is vital to assess and stabilize the cervical spine, check the ABCs and the athlete's responsiveness, and make a transport decision. In situations where the athlete is upright and responsive, begin your assessment. Signs or symptoms considered red flags, triggering EMS transport to the hospital, include significant neck pain, tenderness, or limited range of motion, double vision, weakness, tingling, or burning in arms or legs, severe or increasing headache, seizure or convulsion, loss of consciousness, a deteriorating conscious state, vomiting, or increasingly restless, agitated, or combative behavior. Yeah. No pain where I push? No. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions, okay? Okay. Um, do you know what venue we're playing at? Uh, I think Bellevue. Okay. Do you know Assessment of a possible concussion begins with asking the athlete what happened, and then asking the Maddox questions. These are a validated series of five questions that test for orientation. Okay. Um, how are you feeling now? How's your headache and dizziness? Uh, I'm not too dizzy. My head just really hurts. Okay, do you feel like you're able to stand up and head over to the sideline? Yeah. Okay, let me help you up. If emergency transport is deemed unnecessary, further assessment of a possible concussion can occur on the sideline or in the locker room. When possible, testing should occur in a quiet, distraction-free environment 
and should include, at a minimum, a symptoms checklist, screening neurological exam, and the testing of four main domains, orientation, concentration, memory, and balance. Each is included in the SCAD. Here is how each assessment is done. Let's take a seat on the bench here. There you go. All right, we're gonna go through some symptoms. So I want you to read this paragraph out loud to me, and then you're gonna go through your symptoms and um, choose the number of how you're feeling for each one. So you're gonna read this out loud and then do this to okay. yourself, okay? The athlete should be given the symptom form and asked to read Reading can be a complex task for a concussed athlete. It is important for the athlete to read the instructions out loud and fill out the checklist themselves. They typically feel and for the post-injury assessment, the athlete should rate their symptoms at this point in time. Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you some questions. Okay. What month is it? Uh, October. What is the date today? Mm, the third. What is the day of the week? Sunday. What year Expand is upon it? the Maddox questions mm -hmm. asked on the field. Further questions that establish orientation are important for the continued assessment of the athlete. Now I'm going to test your memory. Okay. I'm gonna give you a list of words and I want you to repeat them back to me in any order, as many as you can. Okay. Okay? Finger, penny, blanket, lemon, insect, candle, paper, sugar, sandwich, wagon. Um, finger, penny, sandwich, paper, Lemon, that's all I remember. Okay, I'm gonna give you the list again. Okay. The memory assessment includes two components, immediate and delayed recall. When assessing immediate recall, you are testing the athlete's ability to form new memories by asking them to recall a list of words. Repeat the word list three times, taking care to give one word per second in a monotone voice each time you give the test. This pacing, as well as the repetition, is important to determine the athlete's cognitive ability to form and immediately recall new memories. Auditory memory can be particularly affected by a head injury and therefore revealing. You will return to this assessment later to test the athlete's delayed recall, but do not tell the athlete they will need to remember the list. Okay, I'm going to read you a string of numbers and I want you to repeat them back to me in reverse order of how I gave them to you. Okay. So for example, if I say one, two, three, you'll say three, two, one. Okay. Okay. Four, Concentration nine, is assessed three. by reading a string of numbers nine, and asking four. the athlete to repeat the numbers in three, reverse order. Eight, one, if successful, the athlete is given a new string of numbers four, that is longer. Here, it is important to say the numbers every one second in a monotone voice. You need to not only pay attention to how well the athlete repeats the numbers back to you, but also if they are able to employ strategy in order to improve their performance. If an athlete fails a string of numbers, they should be given a chance to repeat a different string of numbers the same length. If they fail on the second attempt, this portion of the test is concluded. Now tell me the months of the year in reverse order. Okay. December, November, October, Additionally, to further assess an December, athlete's ability to concentrate, August, have them July, attempt to recite the months of the June, year in reverse order. May, mm, that's as far as I can go back. Okay. Okay, 
I'm gonna have you move your neck a little bit. Okay. Okay, so can you go chin to chest and back? Along with reading the symptom checklist instructions out loud, the neurological screening examination should include cervical range of motion and eye movement. And now we're gonna do some tandem gait. Okay. So I'm gonna have you stand up. Okay, so you're gonna start with your feet together and then you're gonna walk along the tape, heel toe, as fast as you can. Okay. Okay? The neurological screen should also include testing tandem gait. An athlete fails the test if they step off the line, have a separation between their heel and toe, or if they touch or grab the examiner or an object. Finger-to-nose coordination testing is also performed. If the neurological screening examination raises significant concerns, immediate transport of the athlete to the designated hospital should be considered. The balance test consists of performing the modified balance error scoring system. This validated test involves three different stances with eyes closed and hands on hips. Each stance is maintained for 20 seconds, and errors are counted to a maximum of 10 for each stance. It is important that the athlete follow your instructions in order for the balance test to yield meaningful data. This test assesses additional aspects of brain function as compared to orientation, memory, and concentration. Do you remember the list of words that I gave you earlier? Yeah. OK, tell me as many words as you remember. OK. Um, paper. To test delayed recall, pencil, ask the athlete to remember pencil, as many words from the word list lemon, provided earlier in any order. Make sure that at least five minutes is elapsed okay. between the immediate and delayed recall assessments. That's it for now. How are you feeling? Um, I feel a lot better, and I feel like I can go in and play. OK. I understand that. Um, I think I'm still a little concerned that you have a concussion, though. So we're um, going to hold you out for the rest of the game, um, make sure that you're OK, and that nothing gets any worse. OK? OK. I know. I'm sorry. Diagnosing a concussion is ultimately a clinical decision. There is no single test that can reliably diagnose a concussion. If an athlete meets or exceeds their baseline performance of the SCAT, including performing the SCAT with no errors, they can still have a concussion. So if there is any doubt, sit them out. They should remain under close observation by a healthcare provider or responsible adult for the remainder of the practice or competition. If the suspected concussion occurred near the end of a practice or competition, the athlete should remain under observation for at least one hour after the suspected injury. These sideline assessment tools are just a start. There needs to be follow-up care by a healthcare provider. A full recovery means both successfully returning to the classroom as well as completing a graduated, medically supervised return to play program. All involved in the athlete's care have a responsibility. No athlete should be rushed to return to play. The most precious gift any athlete has is their mind. And you have the tools to protect it. Learn to use them, be safe, and if in doubt, sit them out. You can be the reason your athletes stay in the game for life.